Hello friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. I'm so happy that you joined me in this tutorial. Um, we are going to loom knit this beautiful beanie. You know, this is actually a basic pattern. It's a basic beanie and uh, very, very simple. But with this yarn, doesn't it just look so gorgeous? This is Karen Cakes. It's um, the Lovely Layers collection, um, and it's uh, the Karen Swirl Cakes. The colorway that it is is toasted marshmallow. Like, seriously, don't you just think that looks like a toasted marshmallow? I love it. I think it's just so gorgeous. It is a bulky five. Um, it is 77% acrylic and 23% wool. It's a 227 gram ball, which is 252 yards for those of you who need to know that. Now, um, this yarn is just so, so beautiful. I, I just absolutely love it. I used my 41 peg large loom um, that uh, to do this project and you'll see it in the in the video very soon um, but I also want to you to, to mention the um, neck warmer I've got a video that I'm posting at the same time as this beanie um, of this beautiful beautiful neck warmer to match and you know what I think that I maybe used half of this ball um, for for the whole thing and I like I can make another set probably out of the one ball and so it's it's really really um, a wonderful, wonderful project to have and, and cost effective as well. So once you get your loom and your yarn ready, we're gonna make a beanie. But then again, join me for the tutorial on my neck warmer as well. All right, so once we have our yarn, which is Karen's Swirl Cakes, and our loom, um, we are going to begin. Now, I usually don't do really well with any kind of wool. This just has a small amount of wool in it, but this feels so soft. I think that this one's gonna be a winner for me, <laughs> okay, when it comes to the wool part, okay, because wool gives it so much more warmth, right? Okay, so we're going to put a slip knot on our yarn. We're gonna attach that to our anchor peg, which is down there, okay? Then we are going to do the E-wrap cast on. So I always hold my loom up like this and then um, just go behind and in front like that, but it's too hard for you to see in the camera. So I'm going to, so you hold your loom however works best for you so that you can get um, the job done, okay? So we're gonna take that working yarn, we're gonna go in between that last peg and the first, this is 41 and this is one. We're gonna go behind and in front and behind, making a little E, okay? Then behind, in front, and behind. Just like that, just wrapping it in a circle around every peg. You're not pulling tight on it. You have just a nice even tension as it goes through your fingers, okay? Making sure you have slack coming out of your ball so you're not fighting with it, okay? And you're going to just e-wrap all the way around. This is why I hold it on its side because then it doesn't get, get uh, stuck around the other pegs as I'm trying to do the ones in front, okay? So just like that, all the way around. Behind, in front, behind. Behind, in front, and behind, it's just like a little E, all around each peg. So do that till you get to the end. I'm gonna hold this up and do it. See, then I can just go like this. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that in the, in the camera if the angle's wrong, but this is how I just do it, okay? And I'm gonna stay with you because I'm almost there. Okay, and peg 41 is now knit. I am going to then Push these down, you can hold that behind peg 41 if you like. Go ahead and push these down just a little ways, maybe 15 pegs or so. And you're gonna repeat that process on top of the loop that you just did, okay? Above it, I should say, not on top of it, but above it. And you're gonna go around just like the same way you did, making an E-wrap, pushing them down on ahead of you. Okay, this was our cast on row. This will be our first row. Cast on row was the first one we did. Now we, we are knitting our first row. Okay. Push those down and go around until you get all your pegs e-wrapped. Once you get the hang of the e-wrap, friends, seriously, if you're new, once you get the hang of it and you're not trying to you know, hold it under a camera. <laughs> you can wrap these things like mad. Like it's fun to do because you can actually, you can go really fast and uh, get them done. 
and then the fun begins, okay? So almost there. Peg 41 just is wrapped. And so now I'm gonna hold with one of my fingers. Usually I do my third finger. I'm going to, or either one, I'm gonna hold that yarn and behind the first or the second needle, whichever works better for you. Then you're gonna grab your loom hook. And from there, you're gonna get that yarn tail out of the way. You're going to work number 41 first. And the reason why you do that is because this is, is where your last um, yarn was wrapped. And if you, if you just go ahead and you knit this one off, this is gonna start unraveling, okay? So we're gonna just take that bottom loop and pull it over the top and over the peg. We have just knit off peg 41. Now you can let this go and it's not gonna unravel, okay? So I just put it off to the other side. Now what you're gonna do is we're gonna work our first row. Now I always like to know what row I'm working on rather than what row I'm finished. So I'm going to click row one, okay? On my counter, and if you don't have a counter, just uh, record it on a piece of paper because you're wanna, gonna wanna keep track so you don't forget how many rows that you've done, okay? So we're going to then go to peg one. We're going to lift up that bottom loop, pull it up over that other loop and over the top of the peg. Go underneath the loop, lift it over and over. So you're gonna go underneath that bottom strand, lift it over top of that top strand and over the peg, just like that, okay? Picking up the bottom loop, going over the top loop and over the peg. That's how you knit it off. Now, it doesn't matter if you go under and over or if you go, if you catch that loop from the top, it doesn't matter. As long as you take it over your peg, um, that's what matters. Whatever's easiest for you, both work. Again, this is going, scooping it up from the top of the, of the loop. Oops, I, I actually like the other way better. And then taking it over or going under the loop and picking it up and going over. Either way works, you get the same result. And you're gonna go all the way around your loom, knitting off every peg, okay? All right, friends, keep going. And when you get to the end, I'll see you back. All right, so how did you manage? Good, <laughs> that's good. All right, so that was row one done. Now we are going to do the same thing. We're just gonna repeat that process, okay? So we're going to push down some of our rows there some of our pegs, and we're going to then start e-wrapping again. So peg one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to the end till we get to peg 41, and I'll see you back, and then I'll tell you the further instructions. Okay, so I've wrapped all around. I'm gonna get this yarn tail out of the way there. I'm gonna hold it between peg one and two, and then I'm gonna knit off peg 41. That frees me up now to let this tail end go. I'm going to take my row counter and I'm going to mark row two because now I'm working on row two. Again, I like to know what row I'm working on, not what row I'm finished. So I'm gonna then release this anchor peg. You can, if you're more comfortable, you can do one more row um, and then pull it into the center there, get it out of the way, okay? Otherwise it's gonna start, as this starts to grow, it's gonna start pulling on your work, okay? So you need to, to loosen that after the first few rows. So now that I have that done and I've changed my row counter to row two, I'm gonna just knit off, just like what we what we did for row one, okay? And finish this row. Then, when I have that done, I'm gonna just repeat the same process because we are working on our brim now. This one is really fuzzy, but you know what? I love this yarn, so it's gonna be beautiful. We're going to do that same procedure, the same process, wrapping and knitting off um, for 18 rows, okay? So make sure that you count your rows so that you have it right. Um, Continue e-wrapping and knitting off for 18 rows. And when you have that done, I'll see you back. All right, so we finished our 18 rows. That's what the inside is looking like. And this is what the outside is looking like. It's beautiful. It's so soft. I'm just loving the feel of it. Okay, now we are going to make the brim. brim. So what we're going to do, or we're going to connect to the brim. You're going to make sure that this yarn um, is out of the way because you don't want to. It's going to go between the 41 and the peg one. Actually, just put it between peg 41 and one and leave it out of the way in front here. Okay, then we're going to follow down row one. So you're gonna unravel that. You're going to take your peg finger, put on peg one here, okay? Then you're gonna follow this all the way down, 
that same row. Just follow that line all the way down. And then when you get to the end of it, you will see that loop that's right there, your cast on loop. Bring that up, hook that on peg one, just like that, okay? I'm gonna move this up so you can see a little bit better. And you'll see that, that this uh, cast on yarn end is connected to that loop too, so it's easy to find. Then you're gonna just roll this up. You're gonna find that very next loop and you're gonna connect it onto that peg two. Of course, you've pushed down the previous row. You're gonna roll this up. You're gonna take that very next large loop, put it on top. That very next one, go to the next needle. It's very, very easy. Now, if I turn it this way, maybe you can get a better view, okay? You will see that this loop here, it's coming out of here and around. That's the one you're gonna take, hook it on. It's coming out of there and around, hook it on. Hook it on. It might be easier for you if you do it with it, with this part of the um, project facing you and your needles out the other way, okay? F farther away from you. So then you can see it's always gonna come out from under that stitch and around. It's coming out from under that stitch and around. Very easy to see. So don't be, don't be scared. You got this, okay? You're gonna pick up every one of those loops and attach them onto the peg, just like so. See how quick this is? Yeah, just like that. All the way around till you have all 41 pegs finished, okay? I'm almost there, so I'm gonna stick with ya. Uh, you know, I haven't loom knitted in a while. Um, I love to loom knit. I have so many looms, like it's actually ridiculous <laughs> how many looms I have because I used to do a lot of it. But um, if you look on my channel, you will see that there are a lot of circular knitting um, videos. That's because that is, that is the last thing that I have taken up and I've been spending a lot of time with my circular knitting. If you don't have a circular knitting machine, an Addy or a Centro, check out my channel and see what what all you can do with it. They are so much fun, okay? And uh, you might wanna invest in that too. And, but you know what? I was finding I was missing, I was missing the different stitches that I could do with my looms and I was missing using them. It's just so much fun. So I decided to get back into it and, um, and make some videos for it, okay? So now that we have those attached, they're attached all the way around. You can see that all the way around. We're going to take that, start with peg one, we're gonna take that bottom loop and put it over the top on all of our pegs. And that is how we are going to finish off our, our brim, okay? So taking the bottom loop and putting it over the top, just like what we did for our um, other rows, okay? So go ahead, go all the way around, finish that, and I'll see you back. All right, so we have that done. And this, uh tail here is from our cast on okay I'm gonna get rid of that right away we don't need to have that hanging out now that I have have uh, this brim done I'm just gonna trail that underneath just like that and then I'm gonna cut it off just to get it out of the way okay just like so now that's what our brim looking like look how soft it is like just the perfect amount of rows okay if you want a, a thinner um, brim then you can go ahead and do less rows as well but I like a thicker brim so 18 rows is what I what I prefer with the, this weight of yarn now we're going to make the body of our beanie okay doing the same exact stitch so this is a basic beanie using an e-wrap so again we're going to just start e-wrapping all the way around and I love how in this yarn ball it just automatically changed to this color after sip my after my um brim rows were done so it worked out absolutely perfect I'm just loving it even if it wouldn't have it would have been beautiful but I'm so glad that it did okay so we're gonna wrap e-wrap all around and we're gonna work off those um, needles and we're going to reset our counter and we're going to do um, 20 rows okay um, I'm actually going to, 20 rows is generally what I do with this weight of yarn when I get to this point but I'm actually going to do um, I'm gonna do 18 or so 15 to 18 somewhere in there Measure it, see where I'm at, um, because it just depends. Do you, if you want one that's fitted on your head, um, that goes right tight to your head, or if you want one that's a little bit looser, then you just add more rows. But between 18 and 20 rows is basically what you're going to want. Um, so I'm going to stop after 18, 
measure it and uh, and then see if I want to continue. So you go ahead um, and keep knitting Ewrap rows for at least 18 rows and I'll see you when you're done. All right, so that didn't take too long at all. And I've got this beautiful beanie that's coming along really great. I ended up doing 20 rows. You know what, you can just put this on your head. <laughs> put it right on your head and see if it seems like it's long enough. But I did measure it, it's nine inches and that's what I wanted. Um, so I'm gonna cut off a long tail here, just like that. And we're gonna cast off. So once you have your long tail, you can thread your needle, just like that. And we're gonna take off one, loop at a time. So this is coming off of 41 there. I'm going to pick up the loop off of peg one and pull that through. Then I'm going to pick off the loop from peg two and pull it through. And three, just like that, all the way down till I have all 41 stitches taken off the pegs in order. Okay. And then we'll be able to cinch it closed. I have to figure out a better way to show you this um, in, in the video because if I put my camera up too high, maybe I have to do this left-handed. If I put my camera up too high, then um, it's hard for you to see what I'm doing. And being, being that this loom is so big, <laughs> if I tip it up on its side, well, it's just, it's just hard to get a good visual in there. So um, I will... I'll work on that and we'll see what I can do, but I hope that you can see what I'm doing here. I'm taking off every stitch around my loom and hooking it onto that yarn that I have on my needle, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do that all the way around my loom, and when I have that done, I will see you back, okay? All right, so I think I found a much easier way to show you. It's between my legs there, and I'm gonna just take off stitches just like this and go all the way around, holding them with my thumb on the needle so that I don't lose any. And then we're gonna pull it through. It's off the loom. That's great. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just snug it up tight. So pull on that yarn end. And as you do so, you're going to unroll the top so it's nice and smooth. And again, yarn, when you're pulling on it too tightly, it can easily, easily break. So I this one looks like it's a little bit it's not our, um, I'm not going to be able to give it anymore, so I'm going to go around. I'm going to go around the top row of stitches here and pick them up just to give it some strength, and then I can tighten it as I go, okay? All right, so back up on the table here, now that I have the loom off. But I went around um, twice, maybe, maybe three times even, just to make sure it's nice and secure in the closing there and there's no gap. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take a couple little strands there and I'm going to tie a knot. Okay, pull that tight down with my thumb. Then all I'm gonna do is take this inside, pull it through and cut it off, okay? Well, when I get it to the inside, what I'm going to do is just go through the stitches on the top there, just really, really simply, just like that, just so that, uh, and then maybe back, just so that it holds that yarn in place. Because it's a single layer beanie, I don't have two um, layers to, to go between, so I'm just going to do it like that. Cut this off, and there we have it. This is such a beautiful, beautiful yarn. I love it. It's just gorgeous. The way it transitions from the light to the dark, very, very pretty. Now we're going to um, add our pom-pom. And once we get our pom-pom done, we'll be finished. So join me as we, you can either make a pom-pom with your clover pom-pom maker or however you choose to make a pom-pom. You can use a faux fur pom-pom. Um, I'm going to show you both and you can see what you like better, okay? Okay, so there's my beautiful pom-pom. I love it. Um, I used this mint green pom 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 clover pom pom maker to uh, make this one um i have a set of four and this is the third one in the size um okay so uh you go ahead and make your pom poms however you like to make them but i like this size and i also do have a um faux fur one here i'm gonna give that a little shake to make it a little bit nicer and i like them both 
But if I'm honest, I like this one better with this hat. It's just chunkier looking. I just love the little white flex on the top. Um, but if I was to use this full fur one, I would, well, for either one actually, I would take my little pumpkin. Now I'm going to put the description in the description below. I'm going to have the link for these pumpkins and you can order them if you like. I believe they're only available in the States. She had sent me some because I've been using them in my videos. But um, you can contact her through Renda through the link that I will put in the description box below and find out from her how to go about getting these, okay? And then you wrap this elastic around this pumpkin and um, then you, once it's on there, you bend it in half and it goes in through the top of your hat and then it opens up and stays and then you squeeze it to get it out. I left, I tightened this really tight. If you're gonna use this, you have to leave a little bit of a space in there. You can put one of these in like this and then tighten it around that so you have the right length or the right width um, of opening, but uh, I didn't leave enough space for that and it's okay because I'm gonna use this one. And if I wanted to make this one reversible, all I would, or removable, sorry, all I would do is wrap this one end around that way and this one that way and tie it really tight and use it the same way that I would use the one with the elastic. But for this one, I'm gonna make it permanent. Okay? I am keeping this hat and I'm not gonna take it off, the pom-pom off. I like it with a pom-pom. So right into that hole there, I'm actually going to just take one of these strands, sorry, one of these strands, put it into that top hole there, pull it through. Then I'm going to take the other one and I'm going to go off to the side of that hole just so that I have some um, yarn in between when I tie a knot, okay? So instead of going right into the center, I'm just going to go right off to the side, just a little bit, pull it through. Then I've got them both on this side. I can tie off a knot, nice and tight to the top of the hat. Tie a good firm knot, I'll do it three times. Oh, oh good thing I did it three times. The wool, in, it's the wool in that yarn that makes it, um, that makes it breakable. So be very careful when you're pulling on it. I, I was very careful when I um, tightened it around the rim too, around the outside too. So, but that's okay, it's not gonna go anywhere. I'm going to now put both of those on there. I'm just going to reinforce it around that first row of stitches again, okay? Just going around a few. And then I'll take it back and go the other way once and cut them off, okay? So go ahead and do that and I will see you back. All right, my friends, we completed our beanie and it's beautiful. Love this yarn, it's just so soft. Um, pom pom turned out great. And I'm gonna enjoy wearing this. I, I'm gonna keep this for myself because I I love the color and I think it's gonna be one of my go-to um, beanies this winter. So I have to trim up a couple of these longer pieces because I'm very particular when I make pom poms. I like it to be just beautiful and I see a few sticking up, but there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you make yourself your, your very own beanie. <laughs> um, I want you to take a note of another video that I have. It is the neck warmer. Now I made it with the same yarn, same ball, and it matches the beanie. And it's just a beautiful set. So look at my channel and find that um, neck warmer as well. And you will have yourself a beautiful set for yourself or for a gift or for your craft sales, however you decide. Um, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna make the matching set. So thanks again, my friends, for watching this video. Thanks for making um, a, a beanie along with me, um, and for supporting my channel in the way that you do by by watching and hitting that like button and subscribe. Um, I really do appreciate if you do that for me. It helps uh, circulate the video. And please come on over to my Facebook group. It's Koala Knits and Knacks. Um, I'll put the link below in the description box, but come on over there and join join our wonderful group there um, and show us your, your creations. We'd love to have you as a part of that group. So thanks again for watching. Take care, my friends, and we'll see you in the next video.